Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 State of the City Address here at the beautiful Riverfront Library in our great city of Yonkers. <laughs> Looks like already everybody's already taken a seat, so we'll get started to welcome our city, county, and state dignitaries. Joining us this evening, representing Governor Kathy Hochul, Brandon Lloyd, Westchester County Legislator, the Honorable James Nolan, Westchester County Legislator, the Honorable Jose Alvarado. Westchester County Legislator, the Honorable Christopher Johnson. Westchester County Legislator, the Honorable David Tubiolo. Former New York State Senator, the Honorable Nick Spano. Yonkers City Clerk, Vincent Spano. And our First Lady of the City of Yonkers, Ms. Mary Kelly. All right, everybody, ready to give a very warm Yonkers welcome. Please draw your attention to the back of the auditorium. Time to welcome our honorable judges and other local officials. Yonkers City Court Judge, the Honorable Karen Beltran. Yonkers City Court Judge, the Honorable Ada Medina. Yonkers City Court Judge, the Honorable Karen Best. Yonkers City Court Judge, Chief Judge, the Honorable Arthur Doran III. New York State Supreme Court Judge, the Honorable Larry Schwartz. New York State Supreme Court Judge, the Honorable Hal Greenwald. New York State Supreme Court Judge, the Honorable Fran Connolly. New York State Supreme Court Judge, the Honorable Charles Wood. New York State Supreme Court Acting Judge, the Honorable Rolf Thorson. Family Court Judge, the Honorable Mary Ann Scatteretico Neighbor. Westchester County Family Court Judge, the Honorable Nilda Horowitz. And please welcome with us tonight, Deputy Westchester County Executive, the Honorable Ken Jenkins. And here comes Westchester County Executive, the Honorable George Latimer. Put your hands together for our Yonkers City Council members. Yonkers City Council member, the Honorable Anthony Maranti. Yonkers City Council member, the Honorable Corazon Pineda Isaac. Yonkers City Council member, the Honorable Shanae Williams. Yonkers City Council member and Majority Whip, the Honorable John Rubo. Yonkers City Council Minority Leader, the Honorable Mike Breen. Yonkers City Council Majority Leader, the Honorable Tasha Diaz. And Yonkers City Council President, the Honorable Lakeisha Collins Bellamy. Are you guys ready for the man of the hour? For the purpose of presenting his annual State of the City Address, please welcome the 42nd Mayor of the City of Yonkers, Mayor Mike Spano.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Mike Spano is in the building. We'd also like to recognize Annie Wallace, who is here re representing State Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins. Now please welcome our Yonkers Police Department Color Guard, led by Captain Richard Alemo. Please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance, led by my brother's keeper student, Tristan Palmer, followed by our national anthem, performed by the Lincoln High School Gospel Alumni Choir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's give another round of applause for the Lincoln High School Gospel Alumni Choir. My brother's keeper student, Tristan Palmer. He's a Roosevelt High School senior and our Yonkers Police Color Guard, led by Captain Richard Alamo. You can all now be seated. Tonight, we celebrate the accomplishments and achievements of our great city under the leadership of Mayor Mike Spano. It's a time to reflect explore new horizons, and prepare for a future more successful than ever before. Together, let's reimagine the state of our city. But first, let's take a look at how far we've come. Here's a short snapshot of our story. But 
I think of Yonkers, you think of Mayor Spano. I love Yonkers. It's one of the most diverse cities of the New York area. Well, today, Yonkers Mayor Mike Spano announced Sanja Smash to be the city's first ever equity officer. Fascinating story in Yonkers. The city named its first ever poet laureate today. These neighborhood parks are bedrocks for our city. I really do like the sense of community here. The church bells tolled at noon at St. Michael's Ukrainian Church. When I went to school, I kind of had a great experience being able to go to school with all different kinds of people from all walks of life. I pledge, I pledge to, come to, to come to school every day, every day. and on time. In Yonkers, the mayor and other local leaders visited classrooms at School 30 this morning. A groundbreaking ceremony was held in Westchester County for a new school that's named in honor of a New York native, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. The school on McLean Avenue, one of three new schools planned in Yonkers. This will be the first public school built in Yonkers in 20 years. The city's Board of Education has signed off on a new partnership with the studio that owns Lionsgate to open a new media and production magnet school. They're building a bunch of sound stages. It goes to fulfilling our dream, right, of having Hollywood on the Hudson. And now I'm a production assistant in Lionsgate. I was like, oh my God, I can do this right here. It's like a dream come true. In the past 10 years, I could tell a lot of new developments, a lot of low income housing for a lot of people. Investing in good quality affordable housing is not just our privilege, but it's, a, it's an obligation that we all have. Downtown Yonkers, a lot of the construction, a lot of beautiful buildings, new places. So I've seen a big growth in the last 10 years that I've been here. Mayor Spano says the budget drama he inherited in 2012 is over. It's a safe place to live. Crime in New York's third largest city is way down. 45% over the last 10 years. Yonkers Mayor Michael Spano joined the cops in the field during the weekend sweep. Not only has crime dropped, but so too have the number of arrests and the number of complaints against officers. My nominee for Yonkers Police Commissioner, Christopher Sepienza. And Mayor Spano announced the creation of a new facility where first responders, police and fire, will train together, take classes, so they can work better together out on emergency calls. We want to make sure that, uh, that we are able to have the, the, the right equipment uh, for the individuals who are going out there and put their lives on the line for us. The mayor is doing a great job. He the bosses of all bosses. People are so happy in your city. What are you doing right? You know what? I just hope that uh, you make people feel proud. When people ask where you're from, I say I'm from Yonkers, New York, and you know I say that with pride, 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 42nd mayor of the city of Yonkers, Mayor Mike Spano. Council President, Grr, right? Sprout. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Please have a seat. And good evening, Council President Collins Bellamy, and Council Majority Leader Diaz, and Minority Leader Breen, uh, Councilman Rubo, Councilwoman Williams, uh, Councilwoman Pineda Isaac, Councilman Moranti, uh, all that are here today are City Clerk Vinny Spano, because I always forget you at some point. The uh, members of the judiciary that are here today, the Board of Education trustees that are here, our superintendent of schools, state and county representatives, including our county executive, George Latimer, city commissioners, and all of our friends and fellow residents of the city of Yonkers. And I'd like to thank those who are watching live online and give a special thank you to our city's first lady who's here today, Mary, to... 
Now, you all know that I have three children, and, uh, you know, <laughs> one finished college just a, a year ago and is finishing up his uh, master's. That's my son, Michael, who's with us today. And, and my little girl, Alexandra, who hasn't been here for the past three years because she's been away at college while these have been going on. And uh, she surprised me today. She's graduating this year. So little Alexandra, she's probably mad. I don't mean you're little, honey. So, but Alexandra will, uh, will be going to law school next year. So congratulations, honey. My mother, Josephine, who could not be here today, but she's home watching with my sister, Loretta, who made me say that. So I say I'm sorry to my 15 brothers and sisters that Loretta made me ma mention her. Um, but before we begin today, let's give the Lincoln High School Adult Choir and my brother's keeper, Tristan Palmer, a, let's give them a nice round of applause. That was beautiful. Thank you for kicking off tonight's event. I saw it tonight reflecting on my time as mayor and to say a lot has happened in a time, uh, in this time, can't be emphasized enough. Uh, we've, we've been all part of a global pandemic and struck by divisions in this country that seem greater than ever. But when I look closer to home here in our wonderful city of Yonkers, I am reassured that we are on the right path. I see our city succeeding despite all odds, and I see our city not just progressing, but serving as a model for others to follow. So how do we do it? We've improved our schools. We have the best graduation rate of any big city in New York State. We've built thousands of new homes, with more of it being affordable than any other municipality in Westchester County. We've stabilized our finances, We've grown our labor force. We've hit record low, low unemployment, and we've become leaders in sustainability. We've, drawn down, we, we've actually drove down crime. We've opened up new parks and our waterfront. And more importantly, we've made Yonkers a place where people are now proud to call home. <laughs> our, job, our job now is to stay on the path of renewal reach even greater heights, and reimagine, reimagine Yonkers. And here's how we're going to do it. Let's start with public safety. There's not a police department in the nation that's more dedicated to the quality of life and safety of its residents than our men and women in blue. But as a new mayor, I learned that the Yonkers Police Department was under investigation by the Department of Justice and one step away from a mandatory consent decree. Civilian complaints were up. The makeup of our police department did not reflect the people that it served, and there was little community outreach, and crime in many parts of our city was simply unacceptable. And rather than wait for the Justice Department to take over, we agreed that we needed changes and set about making them for ourselves. We reimagined policing in the 21st century, and the results speak for themselves. Through thoughtful strategies, discussion with our residents, policy reforms, and precision policing, Yonkers is one of the safest cities of its size in all of America and the safest city in New York State. We've instituted dozens of community policing initiatives to effectively connect our residents to our officers. Now our department better reflects our diverse community. Complaints against our officers are down. Arrests are down too because, you know what? We've concentrated on the small number of people who actually commit the crimes in this community. And as a result, the biggest change we see is that crime is down across the board 40%. But we're not stopping here. The police have added mental health and crisis management to their repertoire. Yonkers police recently worked with Westchester County, uh, creating a mobile crisis response team, a 24-7 resource consisting of trained professionals to tackle the increase of incidents due to mental health. These specialists work side by side with the Yonkers Police Department to help individuals experiencing emotional distress and substance abuse. The team serves as violence interceptors, and as a result, improves 
these individuals' short and long-term outcomes. In just six months, the response team has already assisted 60 area residents, and we expect them to do even more in the coming year. <clears throat> and with the assistance, and with the assistance of our partner, and this is a good partner for us, West Tab, Yonkers Police Department has reimagined its approach to homelessness, an issue that's on the rise all across America. As we saw growing numbers of homeless in our streets, we knew things weren't working. So we teamed up with West Tab on our own solution. We call it Project Connect, and it consists of teams working one-on-one -on -one with homeless people living on the street who previously refused shelter in the past. Yonkers police assist West Tab staff and persuade individuals to come into a safe, into a safe space, offering meals, showers, and sometimes temporary shelter. The team's goal is to build trust, practice harm reduction, and deliver life-changing services so we can end homelessness. And in the first 18 months as a pilot project, Project Connect had over 2,000 client interactions and nearly 100 people who were living on the streets are now in permanent shelter or close to it. Let's always thank our Yonkers Police Department, our good friend Richard Nightingale from West Tab and the West Tab staff. We are making a difference in so many lives and so much so that we're going to allocate another $1.5 million to keep this program going for another year. But the taxpayers of Yonkers can't keep doing it forever. Homeless services are the mission of the state and county governments. And we've shown here what works. So tonight, I ask that they step up and help fund the program. <laughs> Respectfully. So. <laughs> you know, it's not just adults who need our help. Partnering with the Yonkers PAL, the Yonkers Police launched Community Kids Closet this past December. It's a program that provides a week's worth of clothing for children up to 18 years old, free of charge. The community closet has served over 130 families, including 370 children, and that's not including the dozens of victims that we saw from the Bronx River Road fire earlier this month. Thanks in part to all your generosity and your compassion. Thank you. <laughs> Nationally, we've seen too many headlines involving police abuse and excessive force. In Yonkers, our approach is very different. We have, been, we have programs like ABLE and ICAT training. Our officers are trained to effectively improve their conflict, their conflict resolution skills and expand their knowledge of cultural diversity. These programs promote accountability and encourage intervention when it comes to witnessing colleagues engaging in, one, in, in, in unethical behavior. For YPD, learning and improving their professional skills doesn't end when their badges are pinned to their lapel. That's just the beginning. Our crime detection methods are evolving too. The assistance of enhanced technology aids us to drive crime down. And this spring, Yonkers Police will open the Motorola Aware Room, the first in New York State. And this room will be capable of monitoring police events in real time, receiving data from surveillance cameras, computer information systems, and even a YPD drone. These technologies working together will give our police real time, a real-time picture of crime as it happens and will allow our police to instantaneously direct resources where it's needed most. The command center represents the cutting edge in crime-fighting technology. <laughs> Last year, I told you how we invested in our recruitment efforts to develop a more diverse pool of candidates for the next generation of Yonkers police officers. Thanks to initiatives like our specialized test prep class, Be the Change, Yonkers police officers hired, Yonkers Police Department hired 22 more minority officers just in 2022. In fact, YPD has increased its diversity by 34% since 2011. And a special thank you to our police unions and most importantly, the men and women in blue. Be the Change has become a national model 
on how we can reimagine policing in our community. <laughs> improving, our public, improving our public safety also means our first responders are equipped with the safest and the best equipment available. Our city of Hills is renowned for beating up our fire trucks, but with the proper investment supported by our city council. Two new trucks were unveiled just this year with three more scheduled to hit the streets in the next coming year. We funded over 20 new fire vehicles since 2012. That doesn't just keep them safe, but it, keep, but it also gives them what they need to keep all of us safe. That's never changed. And since many of our Yonkers firefighters are so versed in navigating our roadways, this year, YFD collaborated with our summer youth program to help teens practice for the driving test. I know, I can't think of better instructors. <laughs> that was a loud laugh. They even shadowed our firefighters in testing the YFD fireboat on the Hudson. No, that's not on the Hudson, but you know what I mean. Thank you, Yonkers Fire Department, for being our local heroes and our mentors. Let's give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> Along with our Empress Ambulance, countless Yonkers frontline workers, uh, let's, and, and then all of our countless frontline workers, let's be sure to thank all of our first responders who, re who routinely risk their lives for all of ours. <laughs> From keeping you safe, to keeping you active and healthy, Yonkers continually enhances the space in which we share as a community. Our parks team has set forth an ambitious and transformative agenda, one that's updated our parks, recognized our health and recreational needs while respecting the environment. Nearly 80 city parks are the cornerstone of our neighborhoods, and these spaces remain a priority, renovating nearly two dozen parks since 2012. Improvements include everything from fitness centers, soccer mini pitches, tennis courts, new playgrounds, sensory gardens, all, and, and of course, freeing up space for new parks. I look, look out for additional renovations at Schultz, Pitkin, Unity, Kingsley, Park, Kingsley and others, all while ensuring that they are inclusive and ADA compliant. This year, our parks team has also updated our senior centers at the Bernice Breckman Community Center and Nodine Hill Community Center, uh, providing a safe, inviting space for our seniors to enjoy. This spring, by repurposing, thank you. This spring, by repurposing underutilized land, we will, we will formally open a new tiered landscaped park along Woolburton Avenue with direct access to the old Croton Aqueduct. The park will be named it's, it's done, guys, so when you go see it, you're going to love it. We just haven't opened it yet, but we're going to do that soon. The park will be named for a longtime friend and visionary of Yonkers, Martin Ginsburg, who, who generously contributed towards its cost. Thank you, Martin. I think Martin's here. And thank you for continuing to reimagine Yonkers. I appreciate that. For years, when you thought about the Hudson River and the Southwest Yonkers, you probably thought about the county's sewage treatment plant. And while the county is investing millions on order remediation, the city is now partnering with them to build a new and much more pleasant landmark on the low waterfront. Just a few weeks ago, we completed the purchase of several acres. Uh, we, and when combined with the county property and funding, we will create the city's first ever waterfront park in Southwest Yonkers and the largest expansion of our park system in a decade. Take a look at that. How beautiful that. <laughs> a generation ago, this property was an old oil tank farm. Those of us who've been around a long time know about the old Taracone tank yard. Then it became a bus depot, which we love. <laughs> and now, now it will be a waterfront park, and what a way to reimagine our great city. A special thanks, and I got to do this, to our county executive, George Latimer, and the county representative, representatives for injecting $15 million into our shared vision for the front waterfront. Thank you. Thank you. 
No park has captured the imagination of visitors more than our very own Untermeyer Park and Gardens. Just a decade ago, this hidden gem was in disrepair. The Temple of Love and the Temple of the Sky were shadows of their former selves. The majesty of the early 20th century gardens faded today with the creation of the Untermeyer Gardens Conservancy, led by our good friend Stephen Burns. Let's give him a nice round of applause. <laughs> These gardens are not only a city treasure, but a national one as well. Upgrading its amenities still is a, a priority for us. The largest and most important project to date is the restoration of the Persian pool in the walled gardens. Painstaking efforts are underway to match the original mosaics with that, well, the ones that were originally made in Italy, and we're actually picking them up from Italy. During over 125,000 visitors in 2022, Antemar remains the only great public garden in the country that's still free for all to enjoy. Yonkers also has reinvented itself with the help of our growing arts scene. We've introduced Yonkers Arts Weekend in 2014 to help attract the creative community to promote civic pride and community engagement, and it's proven to work. Take a walk along our waterfront and you will notice the vibrant colors, sights, and textures of all of our talented act artists. Yonkers is now home to artists like Robert Zenkinich, David Hammonds, and Barbara Siegel. In the last decade alone, over 75 public art exhibits were installed with two uh, galleries. Being art friendly even attracted world renowned artist Maya Lin, who designed the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. Her and her late husband, Daniel Wolf, were the first to take a gamble on Yonkers when they purchased the Old City Jail and repurposed it into an art gallery. Maya Lin's commitment to Yonkers continues today and she is collaborating with the Hudson River Museum and the city to develop an earth positive landscaping plan to expand the pollinator pathway on the museum's grounds. And along with the new West Wing, again from Westchester County, expected to open this spring, it should be no surprise that Hudson River Museum has become a cultural anchor and tourism magnet. Visitors from nearly every state in the union, even those abroad, are now checking it out. It's gained such acclaim that the museum is now nationally accredited by the American Alliance of Museums. You know, that's the highest national recognition afforded to any U.S. museum. And then while there are over 33,000 museums in this country, Hudson River Museum is just one of only 1,100 museums that are currently accredited. Congratulations <laughs> to Executive Director Marsha Tuchinsky and the HRM Board for breathing new life into this artistic gem. Yonkers is also transforming itself with the, with the help of billions of dollars in private investment, resulting in new housing, jobs, and entertainment. We've welcomed developers instead of putting up barriers. We've sold off abandoned properties and repurposed them for housing, parks, schools, cleaned up brownfields, and returned the waterfront to our residents eliminated red tape, and became film friendly, leading to the construction of the largest film studio in the Northeast. And supported by the city's largest employer and regional destination, Empire City Casino, in its quest to be home of a full gaming facility. And the list just goes on and on. These new approaches to development not only built a larger tax base, but it helped us spur the creation of thousands of local jobs in varied industries and in all corners of our city. So much so that January 2023 marked the lowest unemployment rate in 12 years. We are also ensuring that our youth are set up for success. The Yonkers Workforce Development Board has employed over 200 economically disadvantaged youth in its summer program since 2012. <laughs> Preparing our youth for today's emerging technology is essential to driving Yonkers' economic engine. And I'm pleased to share with you that in collaboration with the Yonkers Public Schools, 
Ford Motor Company soon will partner with our automotive magnets at three local high schools to enhance their training and to include EV applications and other technical advancements. In return, our students will have direct access to jobs at local Ford dealerships. Now that's reimagining our workforce. You've heard me talk for years about the need to add full gaming at MGM's Empire City and the positive impact it will have on our labor force. Now it's finally happening. Full gaming will add more than 2,000 jobs plus thousands more of indirect and induced positions because of the resulting economic activity. You've also heard me boast about our new found Hollywood on the Hudson fame. Our friend and journalist, you guys have read his columns, Phil Reisman, even suggested that we rename the city. Now I can tell you that that's not gonna happen. Um, but it, I can also say it doesn't get old when you get a glimpse of an A-list celebrity in our neighborhood or at City Hall. A little Robert De Niro there. We've even branded our own sunglasses. Look at this. So be sure to grab a pair of them on your way out tonight. I'm sure they'll be a hot item this summer. So. <laughs> Our friends at Lionsgate have only been up and running for about a year, but they are keeping their promise to provide local jobs. Now they want to do even more with the expansion of a 30,000 square foot studio on Warburton Avenue to be completed this summer. The new studio will allow Lionsgate to film multiple shows simultaneously and will double the amount of new jobs, making it the largest purpose-built production stage on the East Coast. Additional stages. <laughs> Additional stages and an expanded parking garage at I Park are expected you know, later on this year. Also new is the expansion of, of the film studio footprint. It now will stretch from South Yonkers to the former Rising Ground property north near Executive Boulevard with the addition of the Spanish-owned and operated media pro. That's right. You know, their commitment to us goes beyond, um, goes really beyond the community and the studio. A media pro recently pledged to sponsor a new clubhouse to accompany our new athletic field designed for soccer and lacrosse right on North Broadway, and that was funding the city council did last year. How about that field? That's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> Media Pro Field will be the first of its kind in the Northwest Yonkers, benefiting area residents and our nearby school. With all this star-powered excitement surrounding our filming industry, we're even thinking of installing the city's first ever star walk along the waterfront in daylighted parks, honoring the many talents who have once lived here, filmed here, and made an impact here. <laughs> and while we recognize how new industries can help us reimagine Yonkers, we know our history can also provide us with new opportunities. And sprawled across 6.5 acres along the Hudson River, Alder Manor, once home to tycoon William Boyce Thompson, is a historic preservation site being repurposed into a 70,000 square foot event space for weddings, photo shoots, and, and even more. Accompanied, <laughs> accompanied by 25 guest rooms, the 100 or the 100 year old manor will accommodate, or accommodate overnight events and immersive retreats. And there's also a small chapel on the property if anybody wants to go get married there. <laughs> Our, job. Our job is to ensure this kind of development is equitable and inclusive to everyone everywhere. And that means doing so in a way that is mindful of those who have been here for generations and to those who have the means to start a new life here. And I'm proud to say that we are doing both. Since 2012, we've authorized 12,500 new units of housing. And guess how, many, guess how many people had to move to make way, that we had to move to make way for that new housing? Less than the number of fingers on my hand. So how'd we do it? 
We built homes where there used to be empty factories or dangerous brownfields or empty lots that had been vacant for years. And of those 12,500 units, 22% are classified as affordable, which is a better percentage than any other community in Westchester County. You know, that's about 3,000 homes specifically set aside for people making between 65 and 80% of the area medium income. And this year alone, Yonkers is on its way to, to approve 650 new low income uh, rate units at Glenwood Hill Manor, Kimball Residences, Downing Street, and Park Square. You know, we are building homes in sections of the city that haven't seen new development in decades. And we've just created a master redevelopment plan for Ludlow Park. It will include a new mixed use building that will serve as a new gateway to the neighborhood with additional apartments at 150 Downing Street, which currently stands empty. The developer will renovate Abe Cohen Plaza and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on improving nearby Old Boyle Park. The city has also talked about redeveloping Lillow Park, and you know, we've talked about this for years. And combined with the new waterfront park, we are now doing it with the largest private investment in memory. In 2013, Yonkers instituted its first ever affordable housing ordinance, and it's the most effective one in Westchester County. But we, all, but we plan to make it even better. Working with our city council, we are close to approving an enhanced ordinance that will increase the affordable housing requirements going forward, making it the most aggressive, not just here in New York State, but I would suspect in the entire country. We, are also, we also are helping to reimagine privately owned properties by providing quality, accessible housing, especially to our aging population. The former comment of Mary the Queen soon will be an adaptive reuse affordable development for seniors. We are even taking the long abandoned Longfellow school property that laid dormant for years and transforming it into senior housing with a reimagined design featuring 60 energy efficient apartments. Some of, our vote, some of our most vulnerable populations have been uh, plagued by systemic inequities, much of which we are still dealing with today. Red line neighborhoods going back to the middle of the last century, especially in Southwest Yonkers, has resulted in disconnected business districts, educational disparities, and failing inter infrastructure. The, the Yonkers Greenway, supported by U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer, the Department of Transportation, looks to again connect this once disjointed section of our city to the vibrancy of the downtown. Partnering, partnering with our friends at Groundwork Hudson Valley and Macy, Yonkers is addressing some other long-term effects from redlining, including the growing effects of climate change, like extreme heating, heat and flooding. Through the, through the Climate Safe Neighborhoods Initiative, we're identifying heat islands, expanding climate educational efforts, and enhancing or enacting climate resilient improvements. For us, in addition to creating more open space, that also means the planting of more trees, installing rubber matting in, in, in playgrounds and building shade structures in parks and increasing the perennial plantings. We are even looking to enact a new ordinance that will require rooftops on all city owned properties to be painted white in order to lower extreme temperatures in many parts of our city. <laughs> Protecting our residents and our city's natural resources has become a mainstay of this administration. And we've been successful in transitioning our power sources to reduce our CO2 emissions. We are starting to see the fruits of our labor now. CO2 emissions are down 26% in all municipal buildings. Over 530,000 metric tons of greenhouse gases have been mitigated by our transition to a green fleet and another 25,000 tons have been offset in the short year that we've moved to an alternate electricity source with Westchester Power. And when it comes to reimagining our city's own reliance on natural gas, Yonkers continues to expand its green fleet. 
We've already rolled out electric compact light vehicles, uh, but now we're thinking bigger, way bigger. This fall, our Department of Public Works tested its first ever EV sanitation truck. Good news, it's powered up our hills with great success, which is more than I can say about our Deputy Commissioner of <laughs> DPW. So. Sorry, Jason. We are even exploring the possible use of hydrogen fuel as yet another alternative to fossil fuels. You know that electric cars are the way of the future, but in a city where so many people live in apartments, we need places to charge those cars. That's why we, along with the Yonkers Parking Authority, the Department of Environmental Conservation, NYSERDA, and Con Ed, we are installing I'm sorry, 90 new electric vehicle charging stations. And we're doing it in all corners of the city to encourage the use of cleaner, greener energy. That's making it the largest expansion of EV stations in all of New York State. Our commitment to sustainability will become more evident next month when we release the city's first ever climate action plan. This will secure us on our path towards zero emissions by the year 2050. We're doing our part to strengthen our resiliency against climate change. Now, I'm going to test your memory, but last year I told you your participation would be vital in reaching our sustainability goals. Well, I asked and you all delivered. Within the one year since the DPW introduced new innovative methods to reduce our waste, our recycling numbers have dramatically increased. Just look. Together, we've collected and recycled 16,000 tons of paint, recycled and reused 13,000 pounds of books, and received tons of flags, clothes, and shoes for donation. Our most successful initiative to date has been the new food scrap program, with over five tons of food scraps collected since last April. With the level of success, we want to ramp it up, and we want to start collecting by putting a, a piloting in place uh, that will include 500 residential units and pick up the scraps curbside. Your help in eliminating food scraps from garbage aid aids us in reducing waste and lowering our costs. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for pitching in. I never thought that we would be reimagining garbage collection, but we're even doing that. You may have noticed those large piles of garbage bags that typically line the front of residential buildings at night are now few and far between. Thanks to a new ordinance, building owners are only allowed to place their garbage in heavy containers between the hours of 6 and 9 a.m., reducing the time uh, that it's on the streets and accessible to rodents and other animals. Coupled with over 200 uh, litter baskets added to our business districts, school and bus stops, we are recommitting to our promise to keep Yonkers clean. Thank you again to the City Council for your partnership in passing that really important bit of legislation. But wait, there is more. I recently checked out a new underground refuge storage and collection system. And it's meant for large scale collection to replace those ugly, smelly dumpsters, large rodent Large rodent resistant bins are placed underground out of sight and made only accessible to sanitation trucks to lift and dispose of their waste. So how cool is that? <laughs> so. yeah, even that guy likes it. These systems have proven successful in large cities all across America and even in Europe. And this can be the future of waste management in Yonkers as well. We want to ensure that we are taking advantage of the advanced the advancements, I'm sorry, in technology to not only benefit your quality of life, but also your interaction with our city. That means easier, more efficient city services and likely less trips to City Hall. So we are currently evaluating departments to determine which can do business via your mobile device or desktop. And one such department is housing and buildings. And we've heard you. Uh, we don't want to cause you additional frustration when you are con reconstructing your home or maybe even selling your property. And in the coming months, 
five million pieces of paper, including architectural plans and permits, will be digitized and become available to you 24 hours a day. You also... <laughs> you also will be able to uh, apply for a building permit, check for the, the status of a permit, and access building plans all from the comfort of your home. And for those of you who want to still come to visit us at City Hall, we will soon be introducing free internet service to all visitors safely and securely. <laughs> for our families, Y Zone is extending its offerings and opened an office in the downtown, which we're very happy about. And that's to assist Yonkers residents who qualify to get computers and broadband in their homes at no cost. Y-Zone already has assisted more than 400 families in securing free broadband, which is something we know is vital to providing equitable services to all families in Yonkers. Our goal is to make sure that everyone who needs a computer or high-speed internet has it and has it available to them. You know, I believe that no other school district in New York State has reimagined its full potential more than the Yonkers Public Schools. In the last decade, together with our supported board of trustees and, of course, our great superintendent, Dr. Casado. Let's give him a nice round of applause. <laughs> we have all worked hand in hand to rebuild our schools, restore classrooms, sports programs, full day pre-K staff, and most importantly, Yonkers pride. Advocating for our students has been my top priority as your mayor. Whether it be joining the PTAs at the state capitol, holding rallies for fair funding, or spotlighting the magnificent work each of our schools do day in and day out. Your administration has invested more to ensure our children are best equipped for the future. Since 2012, the city of Yonkers has increased its contribution to the Board of Education by over three hundred and fifty million dollars and we continue to outpace each of our sister cities by funding more per pupil than those other four cities combined. <laughs> Along with our partnership uh, with our state delegation, which is led by our great Senate Majority Leader Andrew Stewart Cousins, uh, and the rest of the state delegation. Yonkers Public Schools is outpacing the rest, and, uh, and I can prove it. Our graduation rate continues to rise, and for seven, guys, for seven consecutive years, Yonkers Public Schools has scored the highest graduation rate of any of the state's big five districts, and for the last three years has consistently done so above 90%. Now, that's almost 20% higher than it was just a short decade ago. And 90% of our students are even graduating with regents or regents with advanced designation diplomas. And our career and technical advancement uh, education program currently has nearly 7,000 students enrolled, preparing them, our children, for the competitive careers in tech. So please join me in thanking our many teachers, administrators, and the support staff who encourage and elevate our students each and every single day. We continue to make good on our promise to build new schools, and progress is on way for two new schools. And as I speak to you tonight, we are topping off the Justice Sonia Sotomayor Community School. Plans for a new Robert Halmby School are moving along as the city and the Board of Education recently signed long-term lease at the Rising Ground property, and we're not done yet. It gives me great pleasure to, tonight to announce that we are in the early planning stages of yet another new school. The vacant city-owned property near Ashburton Avenue soon will make way for a new pre-K to 8th grade community school. Adjacent to two local parks and a soon-to-be uh, residential complex, this lo location is ideal for our growing city. And doors are expected to open for 2026 school year, and that's progress. <laughs> you 
Now in his sixth year, nationally recognized programs, my brother's keeper, my sister's keeper, continue to empower our young men and women of color, reaching 2,600 students in 32 of our 39 schools. Many of them jo have joined me in Albany to lobby for more school funding and assisted us in our food drives. We've opened so many doors for these students thanks to supportive college scholarships. Former New York Giants Tiki Barber and Olympic track and field gold medalist Felix Sanchez mentor, mentor and inspire these students to set their sights on something more. I know their experiences in the program will leverage them to even greater success in the future. Please join me in congratulating our young men and women, many of whom you saw to escorting to your seats tonight. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Our student safety continue to be a top priority, whether it be inside or outside the classroom. We know that three quarters of all fatal school bus accidents involve other motor vehicles. More alarming is the fact that there are about 50,000 drivers who illegally pass a school bus in a single day. And that's why starting September of this year, all 400 of our school buses traveling within the city of Yonkers that transport our precious cargo will be equipped with cameras to capture motorists who illegally pass them. <laughs> it's time we punish those who choose to think of themselves over our students. And if caught, that punishment includes points on your driver's license and a fine that starts at $250. Let's keep our, our eyes on the road, guys, and remember, keep our eyes on our precious and most precious prize, which is our kids. <laughs> Educating our children also means we reimagine the spaces and resources they use outside the schools. Yonkers Public Libraries are doing just that. We know young people should be best set up for educational success even before they enter the doors of our schools. That's why Yonkers Libraries are relaunching its 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program, promoting the proven lifelong benefit of reading daily to our children. We also know a fun and cool place to hang out may entice students and families to visit our libraries. Musty shelves, old desks, and dated decor don't do the trick. Instead, the library is sprucing things up this year at all three branches. Newly refreshed areas include the Riverfront uh, Teen Room and New Playroom, The Cove, updated children's uh, rooms at Crestwood, and meeting rooms at Will. YPL will also open a sensory room at Riverfront Library, the first in the New York metropolitan area. The <laughs> that was important because this room is designed for those with sensory processing challenges, um, such as autism so we can ease over stimulation and anxiety so that they can learn, play, or relax comfortably. These physical renovations are perfect, perfect to roll out with the new vision, look, and feel of the Yonkers Public Library. Gone are the days of the old card catalog, just look. YPL's new logo and website are set to launch next month, inspiring our thirst for reading and history. Congratulations, congratulations, Yonkers <laughs> Public Library. The great work of the Yonkers Public Library has inspired me as well. And for a growing, num for a growing city of over 200,000 people, I believe we can do better than just three neighborhood branches. I want to be sure our libraries are accessible to everyone, and that includes our good friends and people who live, at Southeast, who live in Southeast Yonkers, where right now the closest branch to any of them is three miles away. So tonight, I am proposing a fourth branch be added to our system. And I look forward to working with the City Council, the Library Board, led by Nancy Moran, and Director Jesse Montero, as we foster our city's community connection and literacy. Reimagining Yonkers also means revisiting the city's history. And I'm proud to stand alongside many of you. I was proud to stand alongside many of you last summer when we finally installed and unveiled the enslaved Africans rain garden. We are paying homage to the lives and sacrifices of our early ancestors and, and ensuring that their voices are heard for future generations. 
And if you haven't done so already, I encourage you, take a walk along our waterfront, look and listen to who we once were. To ensure that we continue to learn from our city's history, this year I was proud to appoint the city's first ever female historian, Mary Hoare. Among her many projects, Mary has organized self-guided tours of downtown Yonkers featuring our prominent landmarks. And in time, I hope to have a living, breathing timeline, timeline of the Yonkers 400-year history dating back to the Native Americans and the colonists who first called Yonkers home. I want to say thank you to Mary and to all who have dedicated uh, their lives to telling the story of our history. When it comes to paying homage to who we are, we can't do so without honoring those who sacrificed their lives. And this year, the Office of Veteran Services and VFW Post will recognize Yonkers hometown heroes by raising street banners in honor of some of our local war heroes. Sharing their names, faces, and stories is just a small token of appreciation for their sacrifices and their love for our country. So please join me in recognizing all the veterans who are with us tonight. Veterans, if you can, please stand so we can say thank you for your service. As we re-energize Yonkers, we are learning many, we are learning many of our residents are choosing to live out their retirement years here. Our Office for the Aging has stepped up to ensure seniors keep their bodies and minds in sync as they age in place. 450 programs were activated in 2022 alone, including arts, food, wellness, and leisure programs. And with the help of New York State, with the help of Westchester County, we also gave seniors hundreds of pouches designed to destroy unwanted or expired medications safely and permanently from their homes. Yonkers Office for the Aging and the Office of Constituent Services continue to provide important resources to help preserve our residents' health and quality of life. Thank you, Michael and Kelly, your entire teams, for doing such a great job. Part of rethinking of how we approach Yonkers is ensuring that the men and women who operate the city departments are provided the best training possible. Late last year, my senior staff and I attended a four-day intensive racial equity, uh, <clears throat> a four-day racial equity training session as we look to expand our understanding of our leadership roles. The workshop was designed to analyze how systematic racial inequities interact across all platforms, whether it would be in law enforcement, housing, education, healthcare, and employment. Personally, it provided me the opportunity to gain great a greater insight on how we can make simple yet lasting changes within our organization that can create greater impacts on our community on our, and our employees. One such change is the hiring of the city's first equity officer, Sanja Smash. Sanja. You know, Sandra is developing a diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility strategy to fully integrate into the city's culture, mission, and operations. She'll recommend policies and programs related to recruitment, hiring, promotion, training, and outreach. Her expertise will better diversify our workplace and ensure our policies are more accessible and equitable for all. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, I've, out, I've outlined much that we can be proud of here in our beautiful city of Yonkers. It may be because of our latest titles, like Hollywood on Hudson, Best Place to Live in Westchester, and The Happiest City. But I think it's, I think it's, much of it has to do with the talented, smart, and determined individuals who call Yonkers home, like local singer Amara Valerio who went from Yonkers Idol to American Idol. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Let's, let's remember our Yonkers firefighters who were recognized for their heroics during the Bronx River fire just a couple weeks ago. 
And of course, of those who left an indelible mark on all of us, like our good friend, Yonkers Police Sergeant Frank Bardino, who we sadly lost in the line of duty last year. <laughs> Them and so many others elevate themselves and us and make us proud to call Yonkers own. You know, it's been said, don't climb mountains so that the world can see you. Climb mountains so that you can see the world. During our journey in Yonkers, we are seeing a world of opportunities and possibilities, ones that some may have thought impossible years ago. In the time that's passed, we have placed Yonkers on the path towards renewal and resurgence. And don't be mistaken, Yonkers' success belongs to each and every one of us, each and every one of you. And with your continued passion for who we are and what we've accomplished, there is so much more that we can do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to stand here tonight and tell you that the state of our city has been reimagined. And we continue to reimagine what, Yonk what we can be for Yonkers. We can reimagine the future of our students and schools, our public safety and community policing, Reimagine economic possibilities that bring more jobs, businesses, and residents. Reimagine the culture and ethnic fiber of who we are. And reimagine our quality of life and the pride that we have for Yonkers and for each and every one of us. I have never been more optimistic as I am today to be your mayor. There is so much more to see. There is really, there is so much more to see on the mountain that we've climbed, and that mountain we all climbed together. And I know we can reimagine even more for each and every one of us. Thank you so much. May God bless each and every one of you, and bless our city of Yonkers, and have a good night. Thank you.